Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 10 of our TypeScript fundamental video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about working with modules in TypeScript. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 9 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Modules. Starting with ECMAScript 2015, JavaScript has a concept of modules. So TypeScript share this concept as well. So modules are executed within their own scope, not in global scope. This means the variables, functions, classes, etc., which are declared in modules are not visible outside the modules unless they are explicitly exported using one of the export forms. Conversely, to consume a variable, function, class, interface, etc., exported from a different module, it has to be imported using one of the import forms. So exporting and importing, whichever I was saying about in our previous slide, it has a different syntax because they are all sitting in different files altogether. The export syntax of the module will look something like this. You can see that it has an export keyword followed by a braces and there is a type student info there. And similarly for importing this particular type, in another file, it is going to look something like this. You can see that it is importing the student info from a particular file which is sitting in I student info, right? So let's quickly see this in a demo and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio Code. So this is the same project which we have been working so long in our previous video. What I'm going to do basically is right now I'm not going to work with the same file because I'm kind of bored and I could see that the the number of lines is increasing and it has grown to 107 line of code, which is not so fair enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all these unnecessary files or all these interfaces and classes sitting within the same file into a separate file. And you can see that I'm getting an error here. Basically to resolve this error, I am going to create a file over here. And let's call this as a I student info.ts file and I'm going to paste it over here. So this is basically an I student info interface. So I is basically for the interface. It's a convention uh, in C sharp, right? So now we have an interface sitting in here. So I need to export this particular interface to be used within the app.ts file. Now you can ask me in C sharp and Java, we don't basically used to do that. How and why are we doing in TypeScript? Consider this. This is a scripting language. This is going to be like an interpreted language. It is not a compiled language. So every lines of code will be executed or interpreted line by line here. So now since you are putting a type student info or I student info in a different file altogether, it is something which should be known to the interpreter that this particular file is also a dependent file for this particular app.ts file. But we are not saying anywhere explicitly here. So in order to work with those kind of concepts, that's where the module idea itself has evolved. And there are so many other behind the scene operations are happening so that it can execute within a browser, something like module loader, Guys, module loader is something which we'll be talking in much detail in our upcoming videos of this course. There are some module loaders like CommonJS, SystemJS, AMD, right? So those things we'll be discussing later in this course. But as of now, just keep informed that there is something called module loader, which is actually doing all this heavy lifting operation for you, identifying which file is sitting in which particular path and how to load that before executing this app.ts file. Right. But as of now, in order to export an important file, a very, very simple operation that we are do is let's go to this particular I student in for a TS file. And then here I am going to use the keyword export and I need to export this particular I student info type so that it can be consumed from the outside world, which is nothing but the app.ts file. So in order to use this particular file, I need to go all the way to here and then I need to use the import 
followed by two praises and then I need to use a keyword from from which particular file basically it is in the I student info so you can use the dot slash I student info right so the Visual Studio intelligence is also showing you and help which is great now if you just come to the braces and if you just do control space you can see that we are seeing the student info I student info here so I'm gonna use that so now I have imported the I student info and now I need to use this guy so how should I use this very very simple just change this to I student info that's it see now I can use it there the errors are gone and the errors are really happening because I actually changed the type or the name to I student info that's the problem so now all the errors are gone hopefully yep one more here I'm gonna save this and now if I try to execute this particular code it will execute as much like before right no problem here so this is how you can separate the files into different locations right now like there is a separate files altogether and now if I come back to the last one which is nothing but the class let's cut this guy cut class student altogether cut this and I'm gonna create one more file here let's call this as student.cs file oops ts file see now I'm suddenly writing a c-sharp code here so let me do an f2 ts file and I'm gonna paste it over here I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna export this guy pretty much same like how I did for the uh, interface so student it's students actually and the compiler is telling me it's not student and then if I come back here to the app.ts file I can do one more import for and then you can use the snippet here a dot slash student and it is actually students right you can save this and you can see that the error is actually gone for the student right and now if I run this code it will happily execute this code no problem right and now this is the best time for us I guess because this JS file and map file are really not going to make any sense because we are keep on using uh, seeing this particular file as redundant file now I can just go to the settings and I can turn these commented two lines that I did before in my previous uh, videos. So I'm going to save this and now we can see that the JS file and the map file is gone completely and we can only see the TS file. So the clutters is, are gone, right? Cool. So now this is how you can see that we have splitted our interface in a different TS file, class in a different TS file and we can use them by importing and using this particular file as much as like before and the final thing which I can show you maybe is instead of I student info if I want to use the student info because we were getting some error there you can use something like student info right so this is like an alias and if you come to the app.ts file now it should be student info here and you get the same error because it has changed right so you can just change this to student info and it works fine but again I don't really have to change in each and every classes just want to showcase you that there is something called alias where you can also expose this to the outside world that how it sh should be called right so you can do that as well you can do the same for the class as well instead of students if you want to just call it as what student you can use that right so that's it guys this is how you can work with the modules very very high level but we are going deep dive and understand and work with a different way of modules what is the modules all together in much detail in our upcoming videos of this course but as of now this is what it is right so that's it guys once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day